Hi all, this is Jan Almighty and welcome to this video. So in this video we have something different. It is uh, a res day on the candidates tournament and uh, yeah, after round 6 we have in first place with uh, 4 points uh, Mamedyarov and Caruana. So my predictions were at least fairly good. Mamedyarov is up there, he is still going for, the, for that first place. So one third of the tournament went and we have very exciting games. I'm really looking forward to each and every round because with his young and exciting players in Dinglier and uh, Wesley So and Fabiano Caruana, you can only get exciting games. But as I've said, today is uh, a different day, so I wanted to show you one game from the former world champion, Vishwana Tananand. I haven't yet featured any of his games on this channel, and I thought that uh, I should fix that. So uh, I went on and uh, went through some games, and I saw this is one of his latest games, and he's actually been playing in Bundesliga this year. So this is a game from a week ago, he is playing against Felix Levin, a Dutch Grandmaster. And uh, one other thing why I wanted to show you this game is actually the opening that is played. So let me just show you. You have e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4, the Italian game. Also bishop to c5 going straight into Gioco Piano. So actually this is the opening that I was first shown and the opening that I first learned when I came to my chess club. So a bit of a no nostalgia woke up in me and yeah, uh, I was really glad that, that I can show you this game and also talk a little bit about my beginnings. So we have c3 and knight to f6. So for the first six months in my chess club I mostly played d4. But later they told me that this uh, variation was uh, thoroughly analyzed and uh, and that uh, essentially all of the lines lead up to a draw if uh, both white and black don't do it. Uh, essentially after that I decided to move on and play the Rui Lopez and yeah it kind of stuck on me. I'm playing that Rui Lopez exchange variation but nevertheless uh, in the Italian game is always there, there for me when I need it. And here instead of d4 uh, Anand plays d3. Uh, t today a more popular approach, you don't go for that sharp d4, you play d3, continue with the development and then later in the game you would like to play d4 at some point. We have castles by 11 and bishop to g5 pinning the knight. We have h6 and bishop to h4, of course you don't want to give up the bishop for this knight. And now bishop to e7 by 11, because if you play d6 for example, which is a normal move in this opening, um, then you have a problem with unpinning this knight, because now the bishop cannot come back to actually help, and the pushing of the g5 pawn, yeah, it seems uh, dubious at least, because yeah, you're weakening your king side, and the king is already there in castle, so yeah, bishop to e7 is definitely a better move, a better approach. Knight from b to d2, and we have d6 now. a4 and a5, so both of the sides wanted to expand a little on the queen side, so no harm done there. And we have bishop to g3. Now, since this bishop isn't doing any, anything on this diagonal, he is put to g3, and uh, yeah, um, Anand is focusing, focusing his efforts uh, on the center now, because he would really like to push d4, and there he would have a really strong center, and from that he can build on in the middle game and straight to the end game. We have knight to d7 and castles. So now actually 11 played bishop to f6, but uh, I was actually surprised by this approach. Okay, I understand that, that he wants to prevent pushing of the d4 pawn. My approach could have been, uh, uh, would have been a little bit different. I would have played knight to b6. This bishop of course would move because you don't want to lose the strong bishop. And now, for example, you could have played bishop to g4 or maybe even king to h8. Bishop to g4 to pin this knight. White can play h3, you go bishop to h5 and still now white have pro has problems with unpinning this knight. Uh, and on the other hand, if you don't want to go with this approach, you just play king to h8 and you try to push f5. You don't have to be afraid of d4 or something like that because f5 works. And uh, when white takes, you can just take with the bishop and black is solid in this position. But okay, uh, instead of that we had uh, bishop to f6 with Levin, and uh, we have rook to e1 by Anand. 
knight to c5 and now since this knight is a strong piece he Anand wants to exchange it he plays knight to b3 have knight to b3 and queen to b3 so now the queen is also activated and with this bishop they are eyeing this f7 pawn so now this f pawn becomes uh, a problem for black because the bishop is in front of him and you need to think how will you actually resolve this issue uh, 11 plays h5 so he wants to attack this bishop and h3 is played because h4 was a threat and now 11 goes all in because he plays g5 so he is so definitely weakening his uh, king side moving this pawn in front of the king and now he is going for the attack but he has to think about his king's defenses uh, now we have a knight to d2 so that g4 doesn't come with the tempo but g4 either way h takes on g4 and h takes on g4 now Anand since this knight also couldn't do anything on this square because all of these squares are covered with the bishop and the center is pretty much closed he wants to remaneuver the knight to f1 and to e3 because from there knight can control the d5 and f5 square and uh, he is a much better piece uh, we have knight to f1 and knight to e7 so i guess this was a very good situation where king to g7 could have been played because now if knight to e3 you can play bishop to g5 and try to push f5 in the next move if uh, knight to f5 comes you have bishop takes e takes and queen to d7 uh, white cannot defend this pawn he has to strike in the center and yeah uh, black is okay here because the king isn't attacked that severely um but uh, as i said king to g7 wasn't played instead of that we have knight to e7 knight will come to g6 but uh, only as a defending piece because the knight cannot do an actually any harm with uh, jumping on h4 or for example uh, even f4 uh, at some point i mean an f4 square looks promising at the moment but now we see knight to e3 bishop to g5 and d4 so white finally pushed that d4 pawn uh, he took the center so now white just has to build up on his advantage we have bishop to e3 and f takes on e3 so i got a bit ahead of myself uh, there now f4 is uh, yeah just unreachable and this knight he came on g6 but uh, seriously it doesn't really pose any threat he will act only as a defending piece and what uh, what uh, when anand actually took with the pawn to e3 uh, that was an excellent take you don't want to take with the rook because now you you have opened up the f file and he plays rook to f1 we have queen to f7 and now he wants to double up because this f7 pawn is a real weakness now we have finally king to g7 the other rook to com comes to f1 and now f6 but now uh, actually there are these holes in light squares and uh, Anand needs to take uh, advantage of those and he does that brilliantly we have bishop to d3 first and now b6 because you want to move this bishop develop it somewhere on this diagonal in order to keep an eye on this pawn and also that you can move away since the b7 pawn can essentially fall now that the queen doesn't uh, threat to take b7 anymore Anand plays queen to d1 eyeing this g4 pawn we have bishop to d7 and now rook to f5 so Anand really studied the black's position here and he saw the problem of this knight because this knight can only go when he is attacked on h8 which is a really bad square for the knight and uh, with these two bishops when they come alive uh, when the position opens up yeah it will be really bad for black so for example if bishop took on f5 and e takes on f5 you for example you play knight to h8 you have queen to g4 king has to go for example to f7 you have bishop to c4 king to e8 and bishop to d5 attacking this other rook if rook goes to b8 now you can either also take on e5 and now depends on what black plays if he takes with the d pawn we have uh, bishop to c6 threat also rook can come on the d file which will open up and if he takes with the f pawn you can even push f6 and black is just falling apart in this position so probably because of that uh, levin didn't take on f5 he decided to play rook to f7 
So to also include other rook into the game, we have bishop to c4 attacking this rook, and now one final mistake by Levin, bishop to e6. He wanted to defend this rook, but essentially he gave up this bishop, who was a very important piece into the in, in his defense. We have bishop takes on e6, queen takes on e6, and now finally queen takes on g4. White is a pawn up, and he is on the attack. We have rook to h8, but now Anon just opens up the position with d takes on e5, we have d takes on e5, bishop takes on e5. So as we can see, uh, uh, black cannot really take on e5 because the knight is pinned. If you take with the queen, you will just lose the queen because rook takes. And if you take with the pawn, then let me just show you, rook takes with check, the queen is attacked, so she has to take. And after rook takes, king takes, uh, you have a queen uh, for a rook and a knight, and that's a winning winning game for Anand here. So because of that, actually, so bishop to e5, uh, Levin played rook to h4 to attack the queen, but queen to g3 was played, uh, keeping all the threats on the board, and yeah, because of all these problems, uh, the next thing is to actually capture on f6, Levin here resigned the game. And yeah, uh, I was really glad to see that people are still winning games in the Italian game. I I seriously thought in, in the real Gioco Piano. Uh, so knight to f6 instead of bishop to c5 is a more common move that I see nowadays. I was really happy to see that uh, that is actually happening and that is also one of the reasons why I wanted to show you this game. So I hope you like this game from uh, the former world champion Vishwanathan Anand. Uh, because I would really like to show more more of his games on this channel. And yeah, that being said, uh, I would like to thank you for watching this video, and I will see you next time.